So I'm going to tell you a bit of a story, right? I'm about to show you a result oh, and we're going to prove it and then we're going to use it. But I want to give you the context for the result and why I'm showing you and making a special thing about it. Okay. So this is a book. This is a really important historical book, which I am so thankful that you and I don't need to know about. But I'm going to tell you about it anyway because it's an interesting piece of trivia. It's called a book of log tables. Right? So what this is, is before the days of scientific calculators, where you can just punch in log of whatever on earth I want and get a decimal value to who knows how many decimal places, right? Scientific calculators weren't accessible. So these books are essentially, right, log of base 10, base 2, whatever you want, of all of the different numbers, right? So if you wanted to find the log of a base of whatever, you'd say, okay, well, I'll know, I know where that is, that's on page 74. And you'd go there, and then you'd find it, and you get a decimal value to, I think, four decimal places from memory, okay? So this is before scientific calculators. So we're thinking, like, 1968 HSC, you'd carry one of these into the exam room, okay? This is, you know, um, you talk about a reference sheet. This was their reference sheet, okay? It was a whole book, right? Now, what, was ha what happened then was scientific calculators became a thing. They became affordable, they became small enough to use, they didn't take up entire rooms, etc. So they became part of the policy for the HSC, yeah. Are you allowed to use one of these days? Um, not right now. I mean, you can't bring any material with you into an exam, so yeah. Uh, in New South Wales, anyway. Now, when scientific calculators came in, they were like, cool, we don't need to use these anymore. But math teachers said, hey, actually, there's something in that book that we want. There's a single page, which I'm about to show you. So if we go here, let's go to last year, because you're the first year that has changed this. If we go to mathematics, and then we go, yep, there we go. So, this, was the literally the last page of the book of log tables, right? Because it's kind of useful mathematical stuff. And teacher said, hey, hey, wait, wait. Don't just throw out that log table stuff. Calculators, at least the calculators back then, they can't integrate and this calculus stuff is useful to us. We want this page. So they literally got the book of log tables and they photocopied that page and this is it, right? This is it. Now what you'll notice is you've got all of these familiar integrals and then nestled down the bottom here, underneath the inverse trig integrals, are these two guys. And you're like, what on earth are those? They're not in the syllabus. But they were on the page that this was photocopied, so they just sort of came along for the ride. And when it got retyped one day, um, in the last decade or so, it got retyped with these because it's like, well, that was the table of standard integrals. Okay? These are not in the syllabus. There's a reason why. They're quite hard to develop. I'm going to show you them today. Okay? So these two results, they're kind of, um, they kind of marry together. You can see how they kind of connect when you've got um, a sum of squares on the bottom here. Right? You're going to the tan inverse. When you've got the square root of the difference of squares, then you're getting sine inverse. But if you combine them or you reverse <coughs> things around. So for example, here's kind of like a, it's not quite sine inverse and it's not quite tan inverse. There's the square root that you were expecting, but you don't get the subtraction, right? So you've got a sum instead. Or here, if all you do is switch them around, we know switching things around like that can make a big difference, right? It's the difference between an ellipse and a hyperbola, yeah? So you actually get something completely different here versus here, even though all you've done is turn the sign around, okay? So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna get these two results. They're really kind of one result in two cases, so I'm not gonna prove it twice, I'm just gonna prove it once. Uh, sorry, rather, I'm just going to prove one of them. So this is the result we're going to look at. It's, in, it's questions 4 and 5 in exercise 5.3. So the first thing I want you to do is to um, write it down. I'll show you what we're going to do. So, let's, so we're going to do... Um, which one did I have written down? Because I have... Sorry. Let me tell you which one we're going to do. We're going to do the positive case. Yeah, let's do the positive case. Okay, so can you write this down for me? This is what we're required to prove. Yeah, there's that. <laughs> and because we're writing it without the context of the standard integrals sheet, um, can you make sure you add the constant of integration? Okay, so. There you go, that's what you're writing. So, we're going to prove this result, okay? Now, when you look at this on the face of it, 
The idea is, you start from here, and you look at that, you do some stuff with it, and here's where you end up, okay? But it's like, what on earth could you do with this to, to end up here? Like, that's a, that's a mess, right? So what would you do? What kind of strategies do we have to prove this? Well, an easy tactic, and the tactic that the textbook takes, is to say, well, why don't you start with this and go in reverse, right? So here's, um, here's method one. And to its credit, the textbook has done this because this is by far the most efficient method, right? So what I'm going to ask you to do, and I'll give you a bit of a head start on me because it's, it's still not that entirely straightforward. I want you to take the derivative of this. I'm going to, it's x squared. I'm going to leave off the constant because as you know, in this context, it's, it's trivial. We should be able to differentiate this and we should end up here, right? That's what I'm expecting, okay? So would you go ahead, give that a shot, and then we'll come together in a, in a couple of minutes. Yeah. Right? You can see I'm just going to, uh, I've started off already, I'm going to fill in the gaps. What's my first line? What is my first line? That's f dash on f, yes? So you can see I've written it in this form because there's my, um, the, the curly, gnarly part of this, which like, okay, that's a bit of a mess, but it's x squared plus a squared to the power of a half. So I'll just do my chain rule on it. There's the inside, there's the outside, off I go. Okay. Now at this point, what's the obvious thing to do to try and simplify this, especially because you know where you're headed? Same with all numerator. Okay, so I see, I see this guy and this guy, right? And it's like, this it shouldn't be here. So the easy strategy to see is, well, if I multiply by this over itself, right? This is going to resolve a lot of things for me, okay? Now usually, we would say, oh cool, I've got uh, that thing, it's going to become x squared plus a squared without any square roots and that kind of thing. But actually in this case, I want there to be that square root on the denominator. I want that to stay put. So I'm actually not going to touch this part of the denominator, um, this part of the fraction rather. I'm just going to use this and you can see what unfolds, right? When I multiply through the numerator, you're going to get x squared plus a squared because I'm multiplying by 1 plus x. Aha! You see it, right? So that's why you don't touch the denominator. You just leave it what it was before. And what you're left with of the right-hand fraction is one on. This is what I was after, yeah? So cancel, cancel, there it is, right? So what's left for me to finish is that I've got the derivative over here. So what am I going to do to this line in order to get my result? I'm almost there, right? I just need to integrate both sides with respect to x. So this side is a closed bracket there. This is going to be the right hand side over here, isn't it? When you integrate this with respect to x, it just hands you back that. So this is just going to be that plus my constant. And this, of course, is the integral with respect to x. I'm just stating it. Okay. 